Hello, everybody, and welcome to Uncle Todd for Christ. Thank you for joining me on this Thursday, January 5th, 2023. It's 6.29 p.m. Eastern Time as I'm recording today, guys. Running a little bit behind uh, later than normal, usual, but there's, there's guys, there's no set time on these things. It's whenever the Lord provides the opportunity. But guess what? It gives us 24 hours. The way I see it, I got 24 hours to remain obedient and get this video in every single day, guys, as we continue this daily devotional, daily devotional throughout this year. And he walks with me from our daily bread. So, guys, thank you for joining me for today's title, which is He Lives Down the Street. He Lives Down the Street. And our studies for today is out of the Gospel of John, chapter 15. We, we just read this tonight, just about two hours ago, folks. Uh, John, chapter 15 verses 1 through 5, and our lead off verse is John 15, 5, and the Word of God says, and this is Jesus himself speaking, Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing and God, whew, man, that's a powerful verse, guys. Please let that sink in. Uh, Paul Van Gorder is our author today and writes this. A Sunday school teacher had been telling her class about the wonderful qualities of Jesus when he lived on earth. Then she asked, where does Jesus live now? She fully expected one of the youngsters to say in heaven, but was surprised when a little, <laughs> was surprised when a little girl from a poor section of town responded, he lives down our street. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. Uh, apparently, somebody lived in that child's block whose life truly radiated the Lord Jesus. Mm -mm -mm. The youngster told her that person's deeds of mercy and compassion. There you go, Brother Dave. The spirit of Christlikeness was so obvious that the little girl thought it must be Jesus who lived on her street. Yeah, oh man, you gotta love kids, man. When we learn to abide in Christ, when we learn to abide in Christ, others will see Him reflected in what we do and say. Yet, in our own strength, we can't produce a Christ like life. Ooh, guys, this is so powerful. We can have it only when we yield to the Holy Spirit within us, within us. As we stay connected with Christ through obedience and confession of sin, his life will throw, flow through us. In a vineyard, for example, the branch does not struggle to produce fruit. And the branch does not struggle to produce fruit as it draws nourishment unhindered from the vine Clusters of luscious grapes will naturally appear. Likewise, as we in faith abide in Christ, his strength will flow through us, producing the very character of the Lord Jesus. The abiding life is a fruit-bearing life. Amen. Wow. And our quote for the day, God plants grace in our hearts that he may reap its fruit from our lives. Amen. Again, guys, all for his glory. Man, is this so beautiful, guys? I'll tell you what, I'm running late behind because we just had a meeting this evening for Campus Life, all the leaders, and John, John 15, 1 through 5 is actually what, what Cindy read, and we were just talking a little bit about the vine and the branches and what's it mean, and I don't know if this is the same uh, the same chapter where it talks about, you know, the, the branches that don't produce fruit are going to be chopped off and thrown into the fire. Uh, if that's not it, I will add that to the description of this video because, guys, that's powerful. If you're not producing fruit, word of God says you're going you're gonna to be chopped up. You're going to be chopped away from the vine and cast into the fire. Um, and I just love this. If you can just visualize, like, the grapes behind me, and I just love how the author put this, you know, the grapes the grapes rely on that, 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 that branch, but the branch relies on that vine. Well, the vine through the branch produces the grapes through that branch, through that branch being obedient. But it's the vine. Jesus is the true vine. 
And if we remain in him, and how do we do that, guys? We get in this word every single day. We read these studies, watch these videos, get on YouTube and watch some other videos, some lessons, some talks, but crack that Bible open, crack open the word of God, which is Jesus Christ. That's the vine, that Bible, that Bible that's right in front of you, that's actually a vine, and that's Jesus Christ. Open that up. You're the branch. Let that let that vine pour into you so it can pour into you to produce fruit. And the, the fruit we're talking about here is being that example of Jesus Christ. Like this little girl thought, Man, that's got to be Jesus living on the street. This guy's so nice, you know. He, he, he brings us dinner and Thanksgiving. You know, he puts presents on our doors, does things like this. Being that example of Christ, uh, where we say here, mercy and compassion, showing that to your neighbors. And we said in many videos, folks, you know, the being an example of Christ starts right underneath your own roof with your own family. And then you can just expand out from there, almost kind of like a like a, a grapevine. You know, it, it starts at the, the the branch starts at the vine and it grows out and grows out and expands and starts producing fruit. Well, you can start right on right in your own home. Then you go next door with your neighbor. You take it to the workplace. You take it to church. There's some people in church that need to see Christ in you and through you. Um, but guys, without without being in Christ, which is in the word, getting in there every single day, we are we're worthless. That's basically what this is saying, that that, that verse you can do absolutely nothing without me if you're not in me. It says you, apart from me, you can do nothing, nothing. That, let that let that sink in, guys. So why is it so critical to get in the Word every day? That's like a perfect verse in my opinion, right there. That explains why why we emphasize that you got to get in the Word of God. You got to crack the Bible open every single day to get that spiritual nourishment. Again, guys, this has nothing to do with you or me. This is all about God's glory, but He's chosen you and me. To let his glory be revealed and man that's such an awesome blessing to have so let that sink in it's just what an awesome daddy we have that he would choose us to to make his glory revealed to make to use us to bear the fruit that's just uh, to me that's just an awesome blessing and a privilege so guys i love this one again you know i'm gonna say get alone make force yourselves for that quiet time to get into the vine get into that vine get that nourishment let, let, let the Holy Spirit pour into you and, and replenish you so you can be that example. And you, we've, uh, people have said before, you know, you very well may be the only version of Christ people may see. You know, some people don't go to church. They don't want to go. Man, they feel they don't have the right clothes to go to church. They don't want that religion. I can't blame them one bit for that. I can't stand religion. Religion's got to stop. That's a whole other story. But we, that's why God has us to be that example of Christ because some people aren't going to read the Bible. You might be the only, you might be the only version of the Bible. Somebody may know. So guys, we can't do that without getting in the word and being attached to that, that branch, that vine, which is Jesus Christ. So until tomorrow, guys, thank you for joining me. Enjoy the rest of your day, whatever, whatever time it is. And until tomorrow on January 6th, Friday, we'll see what the Lord says then. I love you guys.